And so we're live. Okay, so we're live on Periscope, and we have Stacy from the Mankoff Company here. And we're talking about an upcoming event that's coming up at Athena Trade, and that is the 13th of February. And it is, um, it is what Stacy has gone around the globe to do. She has interviewed some of the most interesting people. And so I wanted to take a little bit of time to talk with her and find out why she began this and um, how she got into this, because there's a lot of people that are asking about that aspect of it, and then some of her interesting ideas and experiences. So with that, I'm going to let Stacy take it over from here. Hi. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Stacey Mankoff, um, Prince, managing principal of the Mankoff Company and founder of the After the Bell events. And for those of you who don't know, After the Bell was the old trading term when the trading stopped at some point, and now it never does. Um, about a little over almost 11 years ago now, I started my company after being in financial services and the events industry and quite a number of different types of uh, different areas in different industries. And I decided um, I took my tax refund and said, give myself a year. And so I did the traditional marketing. And then what I also built with these after the bell events, uh, because the, that's my passion project. I love to, I, mean, I, I have an innate curiosity about all things FinTech. So I started off, I probably you know, did algorithmic trading, high frequency trading, connectivity. And then all of a sudden this topic of Bitcoin came up about eight or nine years ago. And I started doing events in the Bitcoin space. And at the time I accepted payment in Bitcoin, but I transferred it all into cash because I needed the money. Otherwise I would have had about 10,000 Bitcoins. So, oh my God. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I wouldn't be talking to you, Jenny. Oh. I, would out, I would be out in the South of France. So <laughs> anyway, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda. As a friend of mine says, if my mother had a wheel, she'd be fine. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, and then Bitcoin, when we started talking about the underlying technology, because Bitcoin started getting this you know, bad reputation, and, you know, I always had the intuition of all these institutions, these banks and hedge funds, because those were clients of mine in previous capacities and in my marketing. So whenever they heard Bitcoin, it was like, you know, too scary. So we started talking about blockchain. And that's where I started developing these blockchain events. We started off with what is blockchain and then proof of concept and then actual usage for blockchain. And now we're talking about what are the, basically the road, where blockchain is now, what are the roadblocks? And quite a lot of it is the regulatory issues. So we've taken this topic and I've worked, I've done our own events, I've partnered with other people, done it wide variety of industries and supply chain and insurance. Um, you know, a lot of the finance and payment sector. Uh, I've also done, uh, we did one panel discussion on stable coins, um, which is still, you know, some obviously something to talk about as well. Uh, so, you know, we crossed the gamut on this, and I've talked to, you know, I mean, the Lubin for Consensus spoke at one of my panels a while ago, Peter Randall at Settle in London. Um, you know, we've had everybody on this, you know, from the early days before they were, you know, big. And um, and now um, I look for the people that are really um, doing the, the changing, doing the disrupting, and they're in early stages. So it's very exciting and it's always changing. Right? And that's what I really like because I'm never bored. And this event that we're doing in Chicago um, has a nice balance of, of someone who is a VC, a lawyer, um, somebody who does product, um, and then obviously with the you know, Bitcoin, um, you guys um, doing it as well. So it comes from various different perspectives, and sometimes it's like herding cats. <laughs> but it's you know we always we we talk about the issues that are you know, are very important. I love that. That's really cool. You hit on something that's really, um, it's been on my mind because with the different things that are going on in politics and because I'm a law student, I had to read the Mueller report. Okay. So I read the Mueller report. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin is mentioned in there. Do you know that? <laughs> it is. I'm not surprised. I'm exactly. Not. And uh -huh. so what I am always constantly thinking about is as you're talking about regulations and things, it's like we need a makeover, but it seems like 
not a makeover even per se, it's obviously education, but it's when one thing happens that is negative, it, it overshadows so many other things that are going on that you, you know, that multiple people, but also that you are always highlighting, right? And so it's like, I always wonder what is the one thing that is going to help overcome that? Because, okay, yeah, so a criminal used this, they did something bad, okay? But let's look at cash, okay? We can't hold cash accountable. We're not going to stop using cash because, you know, there are bad things going on with it. And there are a lot of regulations. And so I think that I love the fact that you're going to regulations on this panel because I think that that's the number one um, factor that's going to stop the, that will stop adoption, right? Because if we can get some, if people even understand how many regulations there are already out there, I think that would, that would even be very helpful as far as AML, FinCEN, you know, know your customer. And there's, there are lots of different um, viewpoints on that. So that well, I, I think, think, oh, go ahead. If I may, yeah, if I may, it's always been the situation where the technology has exceeded the regulation. If you go back, I mean, look, when you, when you talk about in finance, the stock market used to be men, and it was mainly men, um, yelling orders. Mm -hmm. then, it became, you know, then it became electronic. Then it became high frequency, where things, you know, trading, where things were done in millisecond. And the regulators were up in arms about that because they didn't understand. This is the same thing that happened with Bitcoin and blockchain. When I was first doing these Bitcoin events, we had the New York Department of Finance attending our events. So wow! Understand it. And in fact, when they came up with the Bit license, that came out from one of our panel discussions because they realized they needed they approach some of my speakers to help form that because they, they didn't understand it. And they and you know there's always that fear of the unknown. And it's just like when I talk to um, some of my clients now that are in wealth management or hedge funds or other investment vehicles, and they're like, oh, you know, it's the dark web. It's blah blah. And I said, well. No, you know, no, not all of it is. I try and look at Bitcoin almost like a, it's another currency, um, you know, like foreign currency. So if you're doing trade, that's it. Especially when you're talking about stable coins. The stable coins, they're fixed to something or hard asset of some sort, whether it is a currency or it's a piece of art or something. You're, you actually have a part of something. Um, when I've spoken to healthcare people, I've been talking about, you know, the blockchain technology is more secure than what is now being used to transfer right. medical records. So there are opportunities there, but I think understanding needs to be done the most. And it also really needs to be understood. And you also have to have a really good application. It seems to be going in a way that was really hot for a while, and now it's sort of petered out again. And then, you know, things will happen. And what I found is, again, everything is in a cycle. So when technology firms were coming out with all these um, algorithms and all of that, you had the big banks and such acquiring these smaller companies so that there would be a consolidation. So I think now, until the institutions adopt blockchain on a regular basis, it's, it, it's not going to reach its full potential. What, and just on your ideas, and because you do have a lot of experience here, what um, sector do you think, just predicting, um, would be one of the first that would adopt blockchain technology? Would you think it's well, real estate, healthcare? Um, where is the best, you know, I guess you'd say um, probability? Well, I think payments, obviously, and mm -hmm. I think supply chain also. Um, you know, the, the payments, with the, with the financial, when you're dealing with a lot of the banks, they are the most heavily regulated. And they are the most scared. Um, you know, they they don't change so much. I mean, look, I just switched banks from a brick and mortar one to only an online one because it was getting ridiculous with the nickel and dime fees. Yes. Set, setting. So you know, it'll change. Every you know, I do more with my phone now than you know. I don't. I don't remember the last time I wrote a check. You know. <laughs> I mean, that's just. You know, that's Definitely. just the way it is. Either I Venmo, you know, all these different pay, you know, Venmo, PayPal, whatever you have to send money, it's just, you know, it just makes it so much easier. Um, and I think the, if the blockchain technology, if they can get something that adapts to that seamlessly, I mean, the key is, 
I use all that. I don't know how it works. Mm -hmm. It's all invisible. And that's the key. If it's invisible and it's easy, it will be adopted. Oh, I love that. That's perfect. Um, and I, I have another question to follow up on that now. Where do you think that privacy uh, falls into that? Like financial privacy, data privacy, cyber privacy? So where well, I mean, happen? obviously that's a big topic right now because, you know, especially coming into the election and now with all this hacking and Facebook and, you know, it, it's very hard right now to really retain your privacy. I mean, we all know that. I do a Google search on one thing Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, it's popping up on my Instagram, on my Facebook, on the side of my searches, when I'm looking at the New York Post online, all of a sudden, these ads come up. Plus, I have Alexa, so God knows. Oh, no. And, you know, and Siri sometimes just listens. So, I guess I was going to say, yes. Uh, you know, we do give up a certain amount of privacy to get this ease of use. And I think a lot of people are willing to do it. Look, I have um, TSA Global Entry, at least for now, because I live in New York. Um, and you know that they've now, yes. you know, we're have, we may have some problems with that. Yes, so yes. Like, they already have records on me. Mm -hmm. They already have my eye scan, my fingerprints, all of that. Right. So I'm willing to give that up for ease of access. And I think a lot of people are willing to do that. I mean, you know, um, more are willing to do that than not. I mean, people may grumble and say, oh, my God, nothing's private, blah, blah, blah. But I would I. I feel that a lot of people are like, yeah, it's inevitable. I think it's inevitable, but I also think, and I think that we do have to take a stand, but uh, when it comes to TSA, I'm clear. So I have the, you know, Similar, yeah. and, yeah. and um, you know, people are like, I can't believe you did that. I was like, hey, they have so much, I'm not, I'm not going to say I'm not worried about the aspects of data aggregation at a government level. I'm not going to say that I'm not worried about that because I have concerns about it. But I also know that that's basically like a lighthouse. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to be able to change that in the near future. And mm -hmm. so I see exactly what you're saying. You're going to make your life easier if you do at this point for you before the the new thing came out, you know, global entry. And that's why I did clear because I'm like, you know, I don't want to take out my license all these times and then risk losing it. Right. And then mm -hmm. I'm even in a bigger pickle. So, you know, I'm going to trade off on that. But then there are other ways that you can preserve privacy. And I think I think, again, it comes down to exactly what you're talking about is education, right? So it's teaching right. people when you're sharing on Venmo, do you know you can actually do that privately? By the way, I'm really not a fan of sharing my financial transactions. Yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely that. And, and you know, these debates are why I do this kind of discussions. I mean, they're very high level discussions. Um, don't, in fact, we don't stream. I don't allow any recording or any of that at these events. So it's, it's old school in the sense that in order for you to really learn something is to be there. And I'm known as a connector within the industry. So what I do is bring people together and deals get done or started or whatever at my events because there is a relaxation and people feel really open. I mean, I had San Francisco one with Microsoft and Oracle guys and they were very frank. And I had, you know, people there that were just gobsmacked that, they were so frank because they knew it wasn't going to get out. Mm -hmm. you know? Exactly. And, well, I love um, that. Yeah. They just, and that's, that's really key because so much is done online like this and other conversation mm -hmm. and they're there for everybody to learn about, but they're, but what you're right, that privacy and to have that, you know, that one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, -on -two, whatever it is, that discussion where you don't, have to look over your shoulder and you don't have to worry that this is going to come back and haunt you or somebody's going to keep asking you for your comment on something is very refreshing. And as I said, we've been doing it now almost 11 years. I am floored that you've done this for so long. And I love the fact that when you started out, you're talking about how the traders, you know, used to go from the ticket trading to the algorithmic trading, you know, and, and high frequency trading and on. I'm fascinated by that whole socio, I guess you call it socio emotional and socio cultural shift, especially in Chicago, and how that displaced oh, yeah. people. So these, these, um, the, the, the sessions that you do all over, but especially in Chicago, um, mm -hmm. are so like Chiberia, one of the last ones you like, that was last year's. It was, mm -hmm. everything else was closed. And we're like, no, we're not, we're not stopping because we have all these people no, registered. Everybody came in. And I it mean, was great. I only had one cancellation 
and it was a guy and he was stuck because the train wasn't running. Oh, uh, yes. And he was so sweet. He's like, can I call in? Can I do, you know, he, he was just very, very sweet about it. But yeah, we had like 35 people in the room, right? Yeah. Uh, and okay. So there were like no delivery services that were working, no food yeah. delivery services. And it was, it was a blast. Like, and exactly what you're saying is why I would tell people to come to these because it's, it's not just your random meetup, which is that's, there's a place for that. Oh, this absolutely. is more, like you said, this is high touch networking. This is, you started, you can start a deal. You, if you're looking for a job, it's a great way to get some insight. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, this aspect of networking is, I think almost, it's almost adds a level of exclusivity. I would say, is that right. kind of your experience too? I mean, it is. And you know, because the, the panelists, that we do have are very well selected. I don't just put people up to put people up. I always have a conversation with them beforehand. And then also with the panelists, we have a teleconference beforehand as well. So nobody goes up there cold. Um, and I think that's very important that it is a very flowing, it's very fast moving. I mean, the panel is an hour, but it's 45 minutes of discussion. And then I, I keep the questions until the end. Because I find if I don't, there's always that person that's like, I have one question, and I have a follow-up to that, and all that, and then you're totally derailed. Exactly. So, so what I want to do is keep it going, and, you know, the, the single most comment I get after every one of my panel discussions is, you know, I wish it had gone on longer, and you really want that, because mm -hmm. everybody wants it to be asked, you know, they ever, you want them to want more. You don't want them to be looking at their watches, doing other things. We just had the event in Toronto, and it was, we hadn't been back to Toronto in about two years, and it was terrific. We had about 50 people in the room, and I had to kick people out because it was just like the janitor was coming in. They were just um, having a lovely, you know, everybody was having great conversations, and it was, again, very unique. That is amazing. How many, now, you've gone to Toronto. Where, I know you, you travel all over. Where, how many countries have you gone to? <laughs> well, I've done it for ourselves. We've done it in um, the US, Canada, and the UK. I've done it for other clients in numerous other countries. You can name them. I've done it. I've done events for them there. Um, so you might not see the Mancock company or after the bell, but I've put it together for, for them. So Excellent. we've done similar types of things. So you are also, um, then you also put a lot other conferences together then, right? I do. I do um, other events for clients. Yes, um, you know that's under the Mancock Company. Okay. Um, so, which is a full service marketing firm. So everything to do with marketing, which is everything from web design, brand, to working with clients who are speaking at conferences. Like, how do I speak? You know, working with them on making sure they present it well. Uh, you know, I'm it is very sure nerve wracking. And all, all I've been telling people is, the more you do this, the more comfortable you are doing it. So um, I was just with a client the other day who last year was on the conference and she did it again and she was so she was excellent and she or she went on the second time she's like I'm not going to do this again and she did it and then she goes okay we'll do it next year because <laughs> she can feel more comfortable and I think that's really the key and also that's what I try and do with my panelists I let them know it's a discussion it's not a presentation I'm not doing a gotcha kind of thing mm -hmm. um, it is it is something that. Um, you know, it's, it's a fluid discussion. I love that. That's so cool. So I think that would be the number one reason for people to come because number one, you're not going to see this anywhere else. So you've, yeah. you've got to come down. And number uh -huh. two, it's just, it is, it's really high quality and they really appreciate all that you've done. Um, so let's see, would you like to talk about anything else that you are working on for well, we're the on, you know, we're, we're always moving forward, so we're always looking for new topics. So if anybody who's watching this has a topic related in the fintech, blockchain, crypto space, if they think would make a good topic for discussion, please let us know, because we really do appreciate feedback from people who attend or know us or we've met, um, because that's how we develop these, these uh, panel discussions, is from the audience. Well, that's amazing because it really seems like that's a lot of feedback. Now, do you take the same topic and do you go with that all like for, you know, as you do your circuit, as, like you have select yeah. cities? Well, we do. We do select cities. Um, sometimes we'll do the same topic. Sometimes we'll obviously we'll tweak it a bit mm -hmm. depending on the city or the country. Uh, but, you know, it's basically almost like a roadshow. But we do obviously different speakers because they're 
from the cities that we're in. And as I said, we tweak the topic slightly. But if something big comes up, like a big change of some sort, then we may do, you know, change it completely. Like, you know, when some, you know, later on this, uh, in the spring, when the halving happens, yes. how will that affect anything? So we'll, we may add that to something that we were going to do, like the topic that we're doing with tokenization and digitalization, but how will this affect anything? Very cool. So yesterday I was at Block Russ, um, which is the Blockchain Congress, and that mm -hmm. was in Chicago here. Mm -hmm. It was at the Aon Center. I tweeted all about it. So I always live tweet all of the, the events I go to, and I really like doing that because then I have I have interactive notes in for myself, mainly. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, uh, Commissioner Peirce spoke early in the morning, and she spoke about um, a safe harbor um, for tokens and uh, giving it up, I think it was a three year runway. And I think that, um, you know, so you look at that and I, it just seems like the regulators are really becoming open, more open-minded. But my question is like, what, uh, what are the, what are like the geopolitical um, regulators thinking? Because, you know, we study a lot about the United States and I've looked at the FCA, um, for example, UK, right? And it seems like their sandbox was I mean, it really went well because they partnered up companies, right? They almost gave yes. them like a mentorship. So yep. do you have any um, suggestions for the United States on what you've seen in other countries? That well, work? I mean, obviously there are certain countries that are very friendly with Malta, is, you know, very friendly to this sort of thing, parts of Asia um, and other parts of Europe. Um, and the, as, a, as you said, the FCA sandbox um, in the UK, I have a client who was involved with that as well. And um, yeah, it would be great if um, if they could do that. Um, there's always been competition within U.S. companies, um, so that's a problem. You know, banks. I you know they had a couple of these early initiatives where all the banks were supposed to work together and share information and do all that. And you know, it's a it's a mindset, and I don't know if the U.S. is quite ready for that. Um, I really do think in the U.S. it is um, individual companies getting the technology and either through acquisition or merger. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that, especially the, um, it sounds like a great idea to collaborate and share all of your data and everything, but when it comes down to when the rubber hits the road, it seems like there's mine, a lot mine, more mine, mine. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, it's mine, not yours, it's mine. Exactly. You know, I worked really hard to get this. And, you know, you're dealing with, uh, obviously, you know, entrenched systems as well. And change is scary. And, um, you know, and it's the unknown and all of that. So you really have to be forward thinking and, really, and you have to be nimble. And, you know, a lot of our big organizations are not. I love that. That's good. Very good uh, advice. So yeah. well, I'm very excited to meet up with you on the 13th. And if there's anything anyone else wants to reach out to you, how sh how do you prefer to um, well, get? Well, you know, people can, I mean, you can put uh, the info at manpopcompany.com email address. Okay. Happy to, you know, that's, that's our address for any questions on anything. And if you could post the Eventbrite link for the event, that would be terrific. I will definitely do that. Well, thank you so much for taking the time out. I apologize for the technical difficulties. That's okay. You know, oh. I, it wouldn't. It, you know, it wouldn't be a Friday if there wasn't tech problems. Oh, that's the perfect way to look <laughs> at it. And tech is not tech without having issues because it's just not as seamless as we would like. But thank course. you so much for taking the time. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. You're welcome. Take right. care, Jenny. You bye -bye. too. Bye bye. Okay.